Hello Digimon fans, this past weekend we were able to get our very first glimpse of the Battle of Omni set through a pre-release event. So with local game stores opening up for the summer, I definitely participated without a doubt. And overall, I just gotta say it was a blast. It was really, really fun. It's like the first time ever playing like sealed format for Digimon where we had no idea what's going on at all, but it was great. You know, I want to do a video to sort of recap uh, what we've been through and what the whole experience is like and I want to share it with all you guys. So let's just right, get right into it and head to our locals right now because I just can't wait. I really want to give a quick shout out to Three Kingdoms Games uh, for hosting this amazing event. They host tournaments for a variety of card games including Yu-Gi-Oh, Digimon, Magic and many more that you guys can check out. The community is fantastic and the people are really really friendly there including the store uh, employees and the managers, they're absolutely awesome. Uh, the store is actually located in Main Street, Markham, Ontario, Canada. If any of you guys are nearby, definitely be sure to stop by and check it out to say hi. If this is your first time watching, welcome to the Vault channel. And I would like to ask you that are watching right now to subscribe for more Digimon videos. Uh, also be sure to give this video a like as I greatly appreciate the support. Like I mentioned before, this is my very first pre-release event for Digimon. And I'm excited to see what the store has in for us. Uh, since this is a pre-release, the tournament structure will actually be in a sealed draft format. Some of you guys may be already wondering, how is that even possible? How is it going to work? There is a lot of questions up in the air, but don't worry, we're just about to find out. So the first thing is each participant will be given out 6 Battle of Omni booster packs, along with one pre-release pack. The pre-release pack contains two cards that are within the BT5 set with a very special mark printed on the card indicating that it is a pre-release. Generally, these cards do hold uh, better up in value, uh, even if they were just commons, uncommons, or rares. Three Kingdoms Games was also very kind enough to splash in an extra great legend power up pack for us, which could spice things up a little more uh, when we're about to build our deck. Last but not least, we also get a BT2 uh, Chimera Mon in promo card for participating. It's an alternative art and I really like the new look uh, compared to the original one personally. So let's quickly uh, dig into our six packs right here in our packs and sort of see what we can get. <laughs> Like I love you. Like Ramon, okay. Metal Guard and okay, yep. Shit, I got four I got three Oh, okay, we got the Zort to start off. Now, Omni One Zort is such a cool card, and it's definitely something I am looking forward to pull uh, to get for myself to basically build for my purple slash black deck, uh, which is really, really good, but. Uh, I gotta say, for this specific format right here, it's not the card I'm really looking for if I'm actually trying to uh, play very competitively for this format. Don't forget that because this is a sealed draft format and we don't get a constructor decks, meaning that it's kind of unlikely to build our deck based off of purple and black and we're gonna have to incorporate other colors, meaning for Omni Mons Ward's effect, we can't utilize it as efficiently and effectively. That's basically what it is. Unless, of course, if we do end up pulling a lot of purple and black Digimon cards, which I highly doubt. However, the second effect can be pretty decent as we can remove almost any Digimon from the game, 
Uh, I do plan to include this card nonetheless since it does have 15 thousand BP which could basically help us run over anything and with all the other cards within the set it's actually relatively hard to remove this card alone. Now, with all these resources, we have to make a 40 card deck out of all the cards we pull. The first major rule is that the color does not matter in this format, meaning that we can simply digivolve on top of any color just by following the level rules and procedures as usual. As for option cards, uh, we're going to have to follow the original rules, where you will have to follow the color, which basically means like the usual rule, if you want to play a red option card, you definitely need at least a red tamer or a, some kind of red Digimon on the battle area or in your breeding area. As for tamers, nothing too different, same as usual, you can just play them uh, whenever as you usually need to. Honestly, I think overall we didn't do so well in terms of our pools. Uh, we only got one super rare out of our six packs, which is our Omnimon Zort. And most of my other friends and other players I realize in my locals have at least two, if not three hollows uh, from their packs. But since this is a sealed draft format, it's really what it is all about. You know, major part of the game really comes down to the luck of the draw and the luck of the cards you pull. And so it is really is what it is. Right now, we don't have much time left, so we got to see what we can come up with to build our deck. So let's just get right into it. I do have a quick question for you all. Uh, did any of you guys participate at your local game store for the pre-release event? Uh, let me know how your experience was and be sure to share it with everyone in the comments down below. For starters, we only have two eggs to work with from what we pulled. That means we're going to be playing quite a few of our rookies right off the bat by hard playing them without digivolving. It only makes sense for us to sort of go for the lower cost ones and the higher attack uh, if we can ever sort of get that trade off, but we need a lot of rookies for sure. In general, we still want most uh, low cost guys that can be easily hard played. Also the Megas that we have have uh, very simple effects, uh, which also tells me there's not much point trying to build up the raising area and stacking inherited effects because once we lose that, it's just going to be really disappointing and we're going to lose momentum in the games. Uh, next, I looked at our tamers and realistically only Sora and Joe with 
Izzy and Mimi would be the ones to really play. Sora and Joe gives us uh, two extra memory when our opponent has Digimon with no Digivolution sources, and I can kind of anticipate this to happen quite often in this format and in this tournament at the moment. As for Izzy and Mimi, it's just generically really good since we gain memory off uh, if our opponent has any suspended Digimon. People have to attack into us no matter what, and they're gonna have to suspend their Digimon, making it, you know, happen quite frequently. So gaining two memories weight. On the flip side though, their secondary effects are very situational and very dedicated to their colors, uh, and we probably wouldn't be expecting to using them or pulling them off uh, that often at all since it's, you know, very strictly color based, uh, but I'm not too concerned because of that anyways. So right after uh, coming down to the decision and I'm happy with the Digimon and the Tamer lineup cards I'm playing, then we start looking into our option cards. Now I feel like the best way to sort of go around this is uh, to count the number of color cards that we play in total, including Tamers and Digimon. And then I sort of looked at the most optimal number and ratio to pair the option cards with. After counting, uh, we have like a total of more blue uh, Digimon overall, and also the second to it would be like purple, uh, meaning that it would only just make sense to sort of play the blue and purple option cards since they increase our chances and likelihood of being able to use them. So in the end, I decided to go with Absolute Blast, which is our blue option card, which once again, I am anticipating quite a lot of Digimon to not have Digivolution sources, and this card will be really, really awesome. We also opted in for Demonic Disaster, uh, since we do have purple Digimon, and we can sort of utilize it to swing in for extra attacks, which is pretty good. Lastly, I kind of went for a really random tech, but I really want to test out and see how it goes. I opted in for Blazing Storm of Metal, uh, really just for the sake of having using its uh, security effect. Its main effect doesn't do us good at all, uh, which I'm having a feeling that this is going to be a really bad choice. But you know what, It's we're just here to have fun, so try, try something out and see how it goes. All right, uh, I'm ready with my deck and we're ready to go. So let's uh, jump into our matches to see how it goes. So a little bit of quick info of the tournament. Uh, we got 16 players in total for today and there will be four rounds. Uh, the player who wins all four rounds, which is like X and O or four and zero, winning all their rounds will be given this exclusive hollow alternative art Aero V Dramon promo card from BT2. It has exact same effect from the BT2 one, but you know, this new artwork looks amazing. It's definitely unique and exclusive, so it could potentially hold quite some value as well. To give you guys an overview of all my rounds, uh, we ended up coming 2 and 2. It is no surprise because our deck is kind of relatively difficult to work with. And since I'm not very familiar with how the sealed draft format for Digimon, it's, it's a learning curve for me. We weren't really able to build up strong Digimon within our breeding area and we had to be very conservative at the same time. Since we only had two eggs to work with, like I mentioned before, you know, once we lose that Mega Digimon, it went very difficult for us because we end up hard playing our level 4s and our level 5s. And we can sort of hard play our level 5s and then splash into our uh, level 6 Megas, but they're all the basic ones. I kind of hope if we had one of the hollow ones or like the super rare ones, it would have been a lot better. Uh, for us um, to sort of gain advantages on the board and make the overall deck uh, much better. Uh, as a result, most of our games did end up trying really, really hard and it was just difficult along with the option cards that we really had. They were just mediocre, uh, I had to say. Absolute Blast was great, but then the other two was just very situational, uh, very unlikely to sort of like capitalize off of. However, I just want to let you guys know, it's totally fine that we didn't pull as well as other players. Uh, it's really just overall the sealed experience, and it could possibly even be my deck building strategy. Maybe that aspect is something that I need to work on to improve, to do better next time. And overall, you know, I still had a really great experience in the end. So that rounds up for our Battle of Omni pre-release event for today. I highly recommend you guys who are into Digimon to get at least a booster box for yourselves as this set is very fun and really great to open. 
If you guys enjoyed the video, be sure to give it a like. Also, don't forget to subscribe and turn on that notification bell to stay tuned for more Digimon videos. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. You guys have a great day, great night, wherever you are. Stay tuned for the next video. And this is Vault, signing 